Hey everybody, this is Michael, and I'm here today with Dal Su. What's you up, want guys? To say hi? How's it going? Uh, we are looking at Endless Space 2. Endless Space 2 is a uh, Space 4X game, and I'm not great at Space 4X games, but Dal Su is, so um, he's going to Wouldn't walk me through a plan. <laughs> nah, you're better than me. Don't put all the pressure on me, but I can say that I've been playing the crap out of this game, and I uh, have pretty much mastered most of the most of the mechanics. It's Amplitude Studios, so it shares a lot of uh, mechanics with Endless Legends, one of my all-time favorite Forex games. So we're going to be doing like a little bit of a tutorial here, right? Yeah, yeah. He's going to show me how to play a little bit, and uh, Dalsu has a uh, Endless Space uh, Let's Play going on and over on his channel. Uh, but we're going to do this thing, and uh, he's going to show me how to play a little bit, and hopefully you guys will learn something too. One thing we learned is that Quick Start uh, will take you to your most recent settings, but you actually click this game to start a new game. So that's what we're going to yep. do. We're going to jump right in. So who do you want to play as? You can um, look at the, let's look at the different factions, and we'll just have a quick, basic discussion. Okay. Um, so basically the Sophons are the tech race, and okay. they specialize in tech. The Cravers are the militaristic specialize in tech. I mean, in... in Conquering other planets. The United Empire uh, specializes in influence and political things, okay. uh, which are a major part of the game. Horatio is the most recent addition to the game, and they're sort of like the Borg. I know you're a Star Trek fan, Mirren. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they like assimilate other races into their beautiful, um, harmonious culture. Big brain collective. You're, you're, yeah. this, is, this is who you're playing in your playthrough, right? Yeah, that's the most. It's because it's the most recent one, so. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are interested in how they work. Uh, the Vodiani, have, they're kind of like, um, they have a very, a very, Amplitude games are not like a lot of other 4Xs. You know, if you play Civ, like all of the Civs kind of work the same way. They have special abilities, but they all kind of work the same way. But in Amplitude games, the, the different Civs or what have you work in vastly different ways. So the Vodiani work in a very different way from any other Civ. I don't think we want to play them on our first sort of tutorial. Yeah, these and guys are spooky. This, yeah. And as far as the Lumerans, I don't really know so much about them. I've never actually had a playthrough with them. So, basically we're deciding between a tech game, a military game, or an influence political game. I think that the influence game is really powerful, but okay. so are so is the tech game. All right. Um, I think probably United Empire would be a good playthrough because... Otherwise, there's this there's this resource you have called influence, right. and it, ha it hasn't really been fully implemented yet for all the different races. But the United Empire have the ability to use it in a whole lot of really different, interesting ways. So I think that would be a great. And they also have strong ships, and they're kind of just a general strong uh, race. So I think that'd probably be a good playthrough to go with. Okay. So the Sophons are, are tech peaceful ish. The Cravers are tech military ish. Mm -hmm. United Empires are are Poli Machiavellian. Political. Yeah. Horatio or Borgish, Bodiani or possessed space dudes. <laughs> well, they they work off like these big um, motherships. So the planets are not as important as their like huge mothership. So it's oh, a sort okay. of totally, totally vastly different play style that wouldn't be good for a tutorial. It's sort yeah. of an adva advanced. All right. And then what do we have down here? This uh, ship. That's pulse, the or different just... kind of ships. Each race has a cut has different kinds of ships. Okay. They are. Eh, kind of similar like the the only thing that's different is like you design the ships in this game right and so right. the different classes of ships are going to have different base stats and also different sort of uh, amount of places where you can mount guns and armor and things like that got it pretty got pretty it. standard 4x stuff but they it's it's mostly just to have a different style and a different art you know these games are all about art and and music and all that kind of stuff all right. Well, I'm uh, digging the Russian top, Imperial yeah. style here of these dudes. Very cool. these yeah, yeah. Good. He's we we can pretty much wreck shit with them. Um, the others, I'm not quite as confident about because a lot of their abilities are not maybe fully realized. But the United Empire, I think, um, could definitely could definitely win your first game for you. All right. Well, let's go for it then. I, I love Xeno linguistics. Like we needed to add Xeno yeah. to it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the texts that you start with. So they good start deal. with some pretty useful ones. All right, well, let's uh, let's select those guys. Now, what about the galaxy? Should we change anything or should we just leave yeah, it? Yeah, I think those settings are pretty good. Medium, um, normal age, constellations, number of constellations you might want to set to normal. Um, All right. Oh, uh, uh, no, just many. Okay, I guess, yeah, if you press, press that, that plus button on the right, 
I it'll give you a few, a few more options there. So we oh, have. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, galaxy density, node connectivity. The, that's that's all pretty much fine. I think I would just leave all that alone. All right, let's leave it. Yeah, that's fine. For your, for your first game, um, competitors speed normal, game difficulty normal. I think is fine. All right. And then there's another plus over there if you want to take a look at the victory conditions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, should we yeah. turn off any of these? I noticed you turned I off. I would turn. I would turn off economic victory because okay. it's sort of broken at the moment and also i just don't like score victory because okay. it's just you know i never want to win that way <laughs> what do you get for and you, and you how, won't. how do you win with score victory well in a lot of forex games you know like you get a score mm -hmm. and um like it, how is it, it how many people you have how much production you have all that kind of stuff yeah and there'll be like a time limit to the game and so whoever has the highest score at turn ah. 1000 or whatever and i just think that's a really cheap way to win because the ai and a lot especially if you're playing on harder difficulties which we're not really but if you're playing on harder difficulties the score is always going to be the ai is always going to be winning yeah yeah pretty much because they're until, they're until, fully yeah. optimized, right? I mean, they're just they get so many, ahead. They get bonuses. They get free units. They get free buildings. They get reduced production time and all that kind of good stuff. So score is not really an accurate representation of how you're doing. Okay. And also, I just do not like time limits on my 4x games. Like, I don't like there being some like, oh, on turn 500 the game's over, even if you're in the middle of a huge war and you're taking them over. You know, I don't like that. So gotcha. I almost I turn that off in every 4x game pretty much. Now, I see, uh, I noticed you said something about pirates. They're not strong, but they're annoying. They just kind of disable your... Yeah, I would your... turn the pirates off for your first game. Really? Because otherwise, yeah. Yeah, they they do kind of present a lot of annoying difficulties in okay. the early games. So Cause it's like probably in, better to just... In Stellaris, they're just kind of annoying, you know, and you just deal with them kind of like once. You know, you deal with a couple of ships, and then you find their home base, and you blow them up. But it sounds like these guys can actually interrupt your colonization process it can have right? a huge impact on it and the and the issue is is i don't think that the, i don't think a, a lot of things in the game are like quite as balanced as they're going to be mm -hmm. in the end keep yeah. in mind this is only like the second patch of the early access so pirates might be a little op at this point okay so right. leave, we'll, yeah leave we'll leave them off that's fine for, for a first play through yeah definitely all right and uh should we do anything with the competitors or just leave them nope I think you're ready to go. All right. It's up to you. It's up to you whether you want to uh, show people the cutscene or not. I think at yeah, this point, the, the United Empire has been out a while, but they do have a pretty cool cutscene. Now these guys were like the most recently added before the new guys, yeah. right? Because yeah, I remember the watching last... the video. The video is awesome. Let's... They were in the last patch. Yeah, we'll go ahead and watch it. Yeah, let's watch the cutscene because it's pretty cool. It's very Workers' Revolution. <laughs> All the red blood and stuff flying around. Yeah. Under the visionary leadership of Emperor Zelovus, we have become a proud and powerful nation. It is time to rise up, grasp our future, and seek our destiny among the stars. Imagine the future that we can build. <laughs> we shall construct a happy mech chick. Yeah, send a power loader to make great discoveries and through their conquests, secure our place in this rich galaxy. We will discover new sciences and new life. We will greet new peoples and turn them into new patriots. <laughs> Heard that. Together, we shall leave our mark on history. Yeah, the art is so good in For these games. Together, we can become anything our hearts desire. Whatever the cost, whatever the effort, let us not shy away from the greatness. And then we that see the dystopia, right? A new world, a new life awaits you in the off-world colonies. That, yeah, that was that's just really well put together. They 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 really excel at that. Um, not to say that the, I mean, because I'm a forex player and I like mechanics above art, but it's really inspiring how good, how, just how good the production value on these uh, these games are. Well, and like the interface and all this <laughs> is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, I, I love Stellaris, but uh, but this this kicks its butt in terms of style. The UI, it's really the UI nice. is on endless games is amazing. Okay, so we're looking here at your home system. All right, so you're gonna want paused? to. There's no pausing in this game. Oh, it's turn-based, right? It, it is a turn-based game. Okay. So if you want to zo zoom in, all right. Uh, yeah, mouse scroll there. All the way. 
yeah, this is the map. Well, I mean, you can actually click on the planets if you want. So we yeah, got you... like multiple levels of zoom here. We can go out to yeah. the galaxy. We can zoom That's into right. our local space. You can, can also press space bar to get a sort of strategic view. Space bar. Oh. Yeah, if you okay. zoom out a bit, you can see that kind of, it's not really useful at this point in the game, but it does look pretty cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. So this little like SimCity overlays. Yeah, that the different colors represent the different uh, fids, fidsies, fidsy. I don't, I forgot what the pronunciation of the word, but in all, in, in a lot of forex games, uh, fids is very important. You know, food industry. There, there you go. You see it, right? Fidsy. Uh, <laughs> food fizz, industry fizzy. science dust and influence. <laughs> so what's dust? So you can, can you explain that? Dust is money. Yeah, dust is just money. So. Okay. Um, that you know come in handy with you but later you'll have the ability <clears throat> to actually open a marketplace where you can trade and buy goods okay you'll also be able to rush production using dust and rush you know buildings and, and ships it's really really useful all around resource gotcha. can pretty much do anything okay so here <clears throat> these are this these are this the the planets yeah. in our system right so we're looking a bit shit to be honest, uh, zoom, okay. zoom in, zoom in again. All right. And hover over your colonized planet. This guy here? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see these numbers on the left. Um, well, first of all, I'll just, since, since a lot of new people are watching, I'll draw your attention to the sort of little qualifying phrases there. We have medium, which is the size of the planet, obviously, but I think it mostly, uh, yes, yeah, you can't actually move over there. Uh, refers to how many people you can have on a planet. All right. And po population is really important because they produce pretty much everything. Um, Terran is the type of planet, and so you have different techs that allow you to colonize different planets. This is a Terran planet. You're human, so it's your home planet, and right. it's going right. to be the specific type that you need. This so is that's gonna desert, be a desert. This is this Arctic. Is Arctic. You, you will be able to colonize those later in the game, which you'll right. definitely want to. But not the techs yet. Temperate refers to the temperature. Cold planets are much better at science, and hot planets are much better at production. Okay. Temperate is sort of better at food in between. And then you have teeming, which uh, refers to the amount of food, basically. You have teeming, and then you have, um, what, what's the other one called? Maybe sparse or something like that, where you don't okay. have much food. And so this is like the biosphere, basically. Yeah. Okay. And then if you look under that, you see some numbers. You have mm -hmm. eight, three, four, four. Okay. So this is not a terrible planet, but it's also not really a great one. What this, this is what means we're is, producing? Of... Well, it, it's not what you're producing. It's basically what each population unit makes that lives on that planet. Oh, okay. So you have three pop right now. Right. And so you each pop produces eight food for a total of 24 food, okay. which you can see if you look at the planet above the planet um, on the actual where you're holding your mouse. Wait, where's our actual population? Is that over here? Yeah, those are your pop. You have... Uh, different types of population. Got it. The two, the two that are in the lower lowermost point are your your actual people, your United Empire people, okay. who who actually produce an extra influence each turn because you're influential type people. And then you have Hisho, which are actually a really cool, like I guess Japanese inspired space alien by okay. the looks of the picture. And they actually produce a, a little bit of extra manpower for you. Got it. Now, you also have to consider the political affiliation of each population, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Is that what the militarist thing is down there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They have added this. This is something new to Endless Space 2, as far as I know. I never really played Endless Space 1, but this is not something that is in um, Endless Legends. It's it's a really new, new system, which we'll go into for people who are new. Also, manpower is, is new to me. Well, let but me anyway, ask, uh, under effects ahead. there, there's plus 20 peoples, plus 30 peoples on Meager. What is what is that? That's how much manpower these guys are adding? Yes. And so, what does Meager mean? What, how, how, what is that? that? Is that a condition? Okay, that, that's, what I, that's what I meant when I said sparse. Um, ah, gotcha. It's the opposite of teeming. So they do better on sparse planets. They yes. produce more people, more manpower. Yeah, more manpower. Manpower gotcha. is, is what you use to invade other planets. Gotcha. So okay. It doesn't actually affect your fids, fidzy or whatever here, but it's what you use to invade other planets. Gotcha. Okay. Also, another thing that kind of sucks is we do not have any anomalies or 
strategic resources, or luxury resources. These okay. are three things that you're looking for on planets. The first thing is an anomaly, and you may have one on the on Placidius One. Is that you what see that, that little, little blue thing is? The little box squiggle? there. Um, squiggle. Yeah, the little box that next to ruins with a question mark. Yeah. This is a sort of goodie hut. Um, gotcha. You don't, you don't know what it is. It right. could be it could be a bonus to the planet. It could be free resources for your scout that scouts it, or it could be a variety of other things. But you're you're not going to get anything from it really, uh, unless you colonize the planet. You might get like plus five to some resource or something from your scout from scouting it, but it's not going to be anything you really derive a whole lot of benefit from. the The bottom line is you don't have anything on your home planet that's that's of any value. Okay, what's the four and the little purple star there? Planet influence is, production. Okay, right. gotcha. that is influence. Influence is a resource that is used for a lot of different stuff, but it's not. It's sort of not fully implemented now for the other races, and this is the reason why I wanted you to play United Empire. Got it. Because the United Empire has the special ability to use influence to complete techs and to buy things, which no other no other race has that ability. Cool. The, okay. For other for other races, all it does is allow them to to do diplomatic things and also I think it expands the radius of the planets which you can use to sort of culturally influence other planets uh, and stuff okay. like that but it's not a super useful resource except for this race so okay. it's really it's really good for us and we start off with a lot of it because you noticed our home population if you hover over them to the left uh, just a little bit yep. there yeah they actually produce one influence on and and plus another, plus another on Fritz. So okay, so it's a total of plus two. And and yeah. in the upper upper left up there, um, there is it says zero plus eleven. Does that mean we get eleven every turn? Yes. Yes. Cool. That's you have you have zero right now, and okay. you're going to be getting eleven every turn, which is amazing for like the first turn of the game. You know, okay. most of the races start with pretty much like nada. Okay. okay. And then I, that uh, little double circle. That's food. Double circle. Uh, oh no, that, that's that's dust. So that's your money. Oh yeah. okay. Yeah, the food is represented by the little wheat, um, barley. <laughs> I don't know. Gotcha. I'm, I'm not a farmer, but you know, uh, that Green. that's the food. So food is useful for growing your pop. Right. Each new pop you get is gonna have eight. Is gonna make eight new food, three new production, so on, so on. You can also build buildings that make your production way stronger. Um, so you want more pop as soon as possible. If you move away from the planet, you'll see on the left your population growth. Uh, that's yeah, here. That's it. Yeah. You have six turns to population growth. All right. Um, so we'll gain your... one new pop then. Yeah, but probably not actually because we plan to colonize another planet, and okay. so your this planet's going to be seeding it with food, so it's going to lose some food. That's your approval rating, the one you just passed the con right. content right now. Okay. That has various effects, and then the that is the manpower. Those are the people who are physically defending your planet. Gotcha. And we don't under have that governor. Is governor, we will have one probably this turn. I think that's one of your pop-ups over there. Okay. Uh, ignore the automation policy and system representatives is has to do with what political system you're going to be using. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. All right. uh, why don't you why don't you go ahead and and build a dr you're gonna have to pick something to build here. All right. I almost always start off with drone networks. Is that here? Left to the left is the selection of buildings. To nope, the down down down. Here. Yeah yeah. Oh I see. Oh drone network I see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what's this gonna do for us? It's gonna give you five more production, which is about a ten percent increase from what you got right now. Okay. And it's also going to give you five more food, which is pretty negligible, but it's just, nice. it's a super cheap building. Like any of the other buildings, you, you know, you might consider though, look at the Xeno end one. The top. Okay. Uh, there you go. Xeno industrial so, infrastructure. This one is a bit more expensive, but I'm thinking because you have, your planet is temperate and teeming, is it not? Uh, yeah, one, it one. is actually. Okay. So, so that's going to give one, us 30. 30, total. which is way more than five for those yeah. of you who are math, math oriented um and it but it costs a little bit more it costs 280 so it's going to take you quite a few click on it click click here okay. yeah click it so it's going to take you seven turns yeah seven turns which is not it's not super fast but i think it's probably worth it for 30 production it's going to sort of 
snowball from there, you know? Like, you, you, if you build the other thing, it's going to take you three turns, and then you're going to get five production, and then you're going to build this. Right, but this probably... is like a 66% increase in production capacity. Yeah, so I think it's worth it. Good. And because you start with this tech, most other races don't start with the Xeno Industrial Infrastructure tech. Okay. So I think it's probably worth it to build that. So are so, we building it by having yeah, it here? That's that's the cue, right? There. Okay. So, so we've got it. We've got that going. And yeah, what so else should we you, be doing? That, that's it for the screen. You can back out. Okay. You can How do I roll, do that? I think escape? you can roll your middle mouse back. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. And roll it back again for the larger view. All okay. Right. Now, like a lot of good 4x games, Endless Space tells you what you need to do. So if you look at the right hand side of your screen. All right, this little thing here. Yeah. Okay. Go down to the bottom one. That's the most recent one. You click on that. Now, this is just your sort of intro screen. It doesn't really mean anything, but you're gonna have quests based on your race. So there okay. is like a there's like a master quest that your whole race is gonna do that pretty much carries throughout your whole playthrough. Okay, uh, so this, this is like is a big a, directive we're gonna give them. Yeah, and this is just an intro text to that. Okay. So it's not important. Now the second thing is important. Click on it. Okay, so, have, so you got your. This is your first hero. Okay. Dimitri Linko. Yeah, so he's I'm a good sure... worker, obviously. <laughs> Click on the hero management. Okay. Okay, so your heroes. Um, actually, click on his portrait. I think. Yeah. Double click. No? Uh, oh yeah. Okay, okay. Here we go. Okay, so your heroes can do two things. The first thing they can do is they can act as a sort of general for your armies, for your fleets. Okay. And you can see he actually has his own ship. That's it over to the left. Yeah, it's very, I see that. It's very shitty right now until you upgrade it. Um, but it doesn't matter because we're not sending him out into any battles anytime soon. What we're going to use him for is the second thing, which is a governor of your planet. Uh, so okay. you're going to want to click over there on the skill web. Okay. All right, so he already has some skills. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, it says bonuses on system, 5%. Uh, production on oh, system. Okay. So that's a pretty good starting bonus for heroes. I, a lot of times they're really crappy. I knew he was a good <laughs> worker. I could tell. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be production focused. And then um, it also says he's, he has a little bonus to ships if he's on a, if he's directing a fleet, which he's not going to do right now. Okay, we're going to make him a governor. So And right. we need to give him like governor type skills, right? What would, what would we give right. him? Well, he's got... Each hero has three sort of directions. I think one of them is based on their... Like, if you hover over the symbols in the middle of the web... Yeah. So, United yeah, Empire specific yeah, skills. Yeah, that's specific to his race. And okay. then that Generic. is specific to all heroes. And then the third one is specific to... Like, they each have, there's like a different class. So, he's a counselor, which is, I think, good as a as a governor so anyway you're gonna you, you're not gonna be able to assign any skills as you can see he has zero skill points in the upper left hand corner right now okay these would be not grayed out if we had skill points to spend no um you have to unlock those by oh, spending skills in the middle so gotcha. there are some skills that would help him but he's gonna get experience just by virtue of being a governor so exit out of this uh you can close it yeah okay um yeah just just get out of that i there's a couple different ways to do this. You can go to assign to system and assign him to your home system. Okay. Just select it and confirm. Yeah, confirm. Okay. And he will begin to accrue experience now, which you'll be able to upgrade him, and he's going to help out that planet a lot. So if I zoom in here, yeah, now we see him over here. He's, he's in there. charge. Yeah. He's giving you a 5% bonus. He's also influencing your politics. Right. Because, and, you know, as as the governor, he, he has influence over that. So check this out. He's actually made this take one less turn. That's You're right. Cool. He has. That 5% actually really helped out. So okay, that's six, good. Turns, six turns for Xeno industrial infrastructure at the beginning of the game is pretty damn good, especially when you have a teeming and a temperate planet. So right. your the start is not looking quite as dire as it was before. All right. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Yeah. So what about, uh, what else do we do? Do we want to send some ships out to investigate? There's still a couple things we have to do before we can even okay. end our first turn. All right. All right. The first thing I think we should probably look at is your laws. So upper left-hand corner. Like here? The second one. Second one. Yes, that one. That's going to be open the Senate. Click Senate that screen. Okay. Okay. So you are a federation. That's your... And hang on a sec. Let me just let me just say Skype is kind of uh, wigging out a little bit, so your voice is a little scratchy. Hopefully it's clear enough for everybody. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, I can hear you. It's just a little, it's cutting out a little. So we'll, maybe we'll try to find a different voice thing for next time. But okay. But it's 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 fine. I think it's understandable. It's just a little right. glitchy. All right. Well, let me know if it if it if it blinks out too much. Yeah. But basically, I think it's fine. your your government type is federation. Okay. Um, you get an extra amount of production for that. You get an extra senator slot. Um. <clears throat> Basically, I'm not 100% sure how senators work. I don't think they're fully quite implemented yet. Okay. But uh, you get an extra person to influence or politics. Okay. And, and if then, we over-colonize, we get some sort of penalty, apparently. Well, no, it's actually... You, okay, so if you colonize more than a certain set amount of planets, you start to get a happiness penalty. And what this is saying is the penalty is less severe for federations. Oh, okay. All right. That's yeah, good. So it's good. But the main thing is fucking 25% production on all your systems. That yeah, is yeah, that's pretty awesome. And that's already yeah. figured into that six to six yeah. turns for the other thing, right? Yeah, that's already figured in, which is why you're you're kind of already at a, at a good spot. Okay. Now, you can look at where it's the Senate break down there to the right. Just to the right. Up where the little pie chart is on the upper left. This thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now you are controlled by the industrialists. That all may right. change. For now, you can basically pass industrialist laws. If you look at the right, you'll see active laws. Okay. Yeah, the first is dust windfall. 25% of industry spent for building system improvements is converted into dust at the end. Okay. Uh, uh, that could be nice. Like, so you build a building for 100 hammers, and you get 25 gold at the end. Hmm. Okay. That's hammers nice. or, I, or gears? It's Well, they're... <laughs> They're gears, but you know most of the most 4x games they're called hammers, so I'm just calling them hammers. But oh production. no, no, that's fine. I was just trying to be clear to understand because this is actually yeah, a really yeah, good yeah. thing because we just put like 200 and something into that Xeno infrastructure right. so thing. You'll get you know you'll get 60 gold or whatever, which is like you know whatever twice what twice what you have now. Okay. And then you can actually pass another law, but I don't know if you well you can try click on it. I don't think you have the influence to do it yet. No, you don't. So uh, some some different government types you can do them for free, but apparently in your government type you have to pay influence. So you see the yeah. cost is in influence over there. So you can't do this yet. However, okay. you will be able to do it very soon. So don't worry about that, but do keep it in mind. All right. All right. The next thing is we need to choose science. So click on the little beaker in the upper left-hand corner. All right. All right. So you have four different branches. They recently changed this. It was totally different in the last patch. And they made it into this web, this four-sided web here. That's pretty cool and you have, Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Like they, This is totally different than in the other games. But they've got four different branches here. And you can unlock more advanced ones as you progress. You can see the ones that are grayed out. Right. So should we be going for this industrial tr trade strategic stuff uh, because that's you our know, strong suit, or should we invest in something that's not a strong suit and try to build it up? What I'm thinking, and and this is not necessarily the 100% right thing to do, but as as I've said, the, this race has the ability to really use influence to their advantage. So that makes me want to lean in the direction of the left one. The, oh, this the, one, yeah. Here? Because okay. that helps you to get influence more quickly. So All if right. you can like sort of snowball with the influence, you'll pretty much be unstoppable. Gotcha. So you might want to like kind of explore around a little bit. Also, in this category, in the top, the top of the second echelon. Uh, second, what does that yeah. mean here? Yeah, the top one. Top one. No, the set, the <laughs> the, the the influence category. Gotcha. Yeah, and then. The second tier. Right here? Yeah. And then the top one in that tier. The top one. Gotcha. Yeah. So that is a tech that unlocks some military hulls. Oh, okay. I, see. I don't know I, I don't know why it's in that section, but those are the base that's what you need to start making military ships. So I'm thinking that that would be a good tech to pick first because two reasons. One is because you just need a military to start <laughs> off with because the AI will totally attack you if you don't. Right. And secondly, because you start to unlock the the other tiers of influence based techs, okay. which as as the race you are would be really useful. So, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I kind of understand this. This is the big stick part of diplomacy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to some exactly. degree, I guess. Exactly. So, do we need to get this first, or do we nope, need to? No, nope. you can jump straight to that. So, if I click on that, 
Now you're researching it four turns. Your research is pretty crap at at this point. Um, Did they... It looks like they might have gotten rid of your ability. No, no, it's still there. Okay, see how it says efficient shielding top left? Yeah. And on the right, there's like a little grayed out button. Buy it. The 220. It's so OP, man. So if we had 220 influence, we could buy it? You just get it instantly. Gotcha. It's crazy strong, man. It's really crazy strong. So you're gonna want to get as many techs as you can that that up your influence. Okay. That are all. They're mostly in that category. Okay. So that makes sense. So by researching this stuff, it's gonna make us easier to get influence, which we can then use to buy techs elsewhere. Yeah. So. Okay. I think that's a no-brainer. Makes you, sense. You do want to. Yeah. You do want to be able to keep up on the military techs and stuff too. But I think that. I think that we're off to a good start here. So you can exit this, and the last thing you got to do before you can end your turn... All right. uh, Back up a little bit more. Right. All right, so you've got ships. You've got two ships. Mm -hmm. All right. So the first ship is going to be a... It says patrol. It's actually a scout. Okay, got it. Okay, so there's two things you can do with this. One is you can launch probes. All right. And probes can either, A, explore the anomalies on your planets... And you have okay. that desert, that we desert do have planet. One, yeah. Might want to do that. Okay. What probe can do is it can shoot out in a direction and scout for you. Okay. So, like, say you wanted to explore what was up north, but you didn't actually want to waste your movement points. Well, see, you have to follow the lane. You're right, of course. You've got, you've got five different lanes, though, which is a lot. <clears throat> like, it's going to be tough. And you might even consider building a, another scout, but... Um, five different directions that you can choose to go in. Right. So, Should we investigate make... our anomaly or should we strike out? Yeah, it's a tough choice. The thing about it is, if you investigate the anomaly, you might get a small instantaneous bonus. Right. But on the other hand, it's not, it, like, it, it's going to also discover something on that planet, more than likely. Right. And the, the fact is, you cannot colonize that planet for a long time. So it right. doesn't so we can't take really full matter. advantage of it. It doesn't really matter what's on that planet. Like the mm-hmm. small little bonus you're going to get would be nice. Right. But I think I'd, I'd rather have the probes doing the scouting for me, considering we have five different directions. Right. And it also kind of seems like it makes sense to, I mean, we already own this more or less, so it seems like it makes sense to strike out and sort of put our foot elsewhere. Yeah. The, er- the early game is all about grabbing the best planets around yeah. you. Okay. And especially in your position, because you there are two strategic resources that are really important for building powerful ships, and you don't have either one on your home planet. Okay. And so it's very important for you to secure that, and there's going to be other races around you trying to secure those same resources. So I would almost 100%, I'd use those two probes to explore two directions, and then I would send my scout in a third direction. So basically okay, what, so we have two not, probes. I don't think it, yeah, I don't think it matters which direction. But if you click that button and then you say, yeah, like that. Like that. Okay, so we're going to send a probe there now. And okay, then so we got another probe. Okay, already discovered it. So wait, get out of that for a second. Yeah, okay. I think you, yeah, right click to cancel. Now I've discovered that. If you click on it, it's going to give you a little, my t- a little tour. Yeah. So this is an ash planet. We're not really able to use that. And this is an arid planet. We're not really able to use that either. Okay. So that's kind of not such a good direction right not now. Although planet. that also has four other places to head from there. Right. So anyway, so we go out this yeah, way. I'd say probe, probe in another direction. And it doesn't matter which because they're all, I mean, it's randomly generated. So it could be right. Any, so, you know. Another probe, and why don't we why don't we go out towards the rim? I kind of thought heading towards the center, you know, we might hit yeah. some population or whatever. But we send those guys out there, and they didn't discover anything, right? He's gonna he's gonna keep going on the next turn. They can only okay. move so far, and you've still got some moves on that on that scout. So send your scout in a third direction. Okay. So do I just click that? Yeah. All right. Uh, right right click. Right click it. Okay. Yeah. Let's go patrol. Right click. I yeah. see. Okay. Now so he's, he's gone. Go, he's going to go scout. He's probably not going to reach anything either. Okay. Now, last thing that you can do is this is a this is an actual settler. Oh, okay. okay. So you can take a sort of small risk, and you could send your settler 
scout on with yet him. on on yet another path and just yeah. hope that it ends up being colonizable right which right. which it could be um because you usually have at least one or two colonizable systems next to you but uh you haven't discovered one yet so the chances are you might um well, let's talk time. travel time. Is it better to get him on his way towards nothing and then have to reroute him to something we discover later, or would it be better to leave him yeah, sitting here that's and then the sort of, um, I you know, I, I don't, re I can't really tell you what's better. It just, it's a gamble. I'd well, say let's gamble it's about, on it. Yeah, it's, it's about a fifty-fifty gamble. I don't think he's gonna get blown up. Pirates are off, so you're pretty much safe. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's the first turn. I don't know if you want to put a, a break in the video there. It's been a oh yeah yeah. We got thirty five <laughs> minutes here, so I think we better we better turn. conclude our first turn here. But uh, <laughs> that was a great overview. I mean, this game when I first started it up, there, there are so many freaking icons. I mean, you know, like yeah. Solaris is pretty. You can just kind of roll with it. But this there's right. a lot of moving parts here. Like oh, all the God, man. Stuff Once and... you get into it, you just won't even play anything else. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Uh, there's there's a lot of great stuff in here, and I really appreciate the tutorial. Hopefully, viewers will as well. Like I said, check out Dalsu's Endless Space playthrough, and we'll be doing some more of this. Hopefully, uh, he'll help me figure out this game. Thanks, guys. See you guys soon. Bye.